My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast and it's... It's Pastry, pastry Week. week. Um, it's opened with pastry side. It was. And look... Linda it, continued that. It opened, <laughs> it opened with pastry side. And as we always say here on the Washing Up, carry on as you start as you choose to carry on and continue. <laughs> and, and Linda, just continue the theme of pastry side. Yes. Um, I, look... It was an improvement on last week, mm. which is not necessarily high praise. So this is what we said. They're in, they're in a cycle and they're at week one, like, week, like first week after their down week. And, <laughs> and, and they're all going to swing back upwards. And next week, it's the estrogen high in the tent. You, We're going to be seeing amazing shit. You're going that next week, Japanese week, is going to be the high week. <laughs> Right. Okay. Right. No, no spoilers. But if you watch Uncle Roger, you find out about. This. You already know what happened in Japanese week. Or at least for the um, signature. Yeah. So, so just to give you a heads up, no. Um, <laughs> this will again be another shortish one yeah. compared to what we normally do. But don't panic. We're mm. saving ourselves for Japanese week. So, because <laughs> boy, that's going to need it. So, um, pastry week. Look. I was kind of a bit disappointed with the challenges they set for Pastry Why? Week. I get used to like Patisserie Week and I get used to other Pastry Weeks in like Canada. Don't care. I like pasties. I like eclairs and I'm a tart. We're here for it. It's Christy <laughs> Week. Deal with it. I'm in a cage. Yes, I'm a tart in a cage. <laughs> it's very Tim Minchin of. Yes. <laughs> like I just wanted to see Tim Minchin when when because he did do um, charity bake off at one point. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see him have to do a cage tart so we could just say I'm in a cage. <laughs> it would have been great. Um, I, I now want them to serve all signatures. Oh, sorry, showstoppers in a cage. <laughs> like no matter what week it is, it could be I don't know. Pudding's week and it has to be a pudding cage. Caged. Caged I can't pudding. wait for the cage. Made of pudding. I can't wait for the caged crock and bush. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. Must, uh, just like tent sized cages, life cage. size cages. <laughs> yes. I, um, I want to go back to the, the lion bread sculpture from a couple of years ago and we'll cage it. And then yeah. we can have Peter come in and break the cage <laughs> yes. open and free the lion. <laughs> Noel, as a, <laughs> as a protester, just having Noel, a go. Noel would be the one who, who would do that too. Yeah. Um, so we had, again, we had pasties, we had eclairs, and we had a caged tart. Um, mm. Let's get into it. So Linda said at the start, this is her week. Now, Hermine said it too, but Hermine said it second. <laughs> Linda opened the episode talking about this was going to be her week, and she's just said it straight up, and I'm just like, Oh, shit, she's in trouble. At the moment, Amin's just hedging her bets. Yeah. Because apparently every week's been every her Every week. week's going to be her week. Um, and, and Linda was hopeful, and I, I, I don't quite know in hindsight <laughs> why. Um, Look, it was all going so well. I now, mean, sorry, scrap that. It no. was never going well. She had, she had a decent, there was a decent bake last week. Again, yeah. she was the best of a bad bunch. Mm. Look, again, damning with faint praise there. <laughs> um... Look, last week was terrible. But what's can't hide it. Is I like all the bakers. I really like them, but their bakers this is, are frustrating me. The, the thing that I, pref- I actually like about this season so far um, is while I don't necessarily like what they do in terms of their baking ability, mm. I like them. Last year's group, I didn't like. They weren't the nicest. They weren't, the, they weren't a group you could warm to, whereas I think that this year's group was a group you could at least warm to. Like, like Mark C, I, like I would totally like hanging out, having a chat with yeah, him. Mark, and Mark, Mark, Mark E, Mark and the Funky Bunch would be great too. They'd <laughs> yes. be fantastic. Um, Isn't that Mark C? Or no, there's Mark, Mark C and Mark. There's, no, Mark, yeah, Mark with a C is Mark E, Mark and the, Mark, and the Funky yeah. Bunch. Yeah. yeah, and then Mark with a K. We, 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 we do the difference, obviously, in pronunciation. You know this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um and of course, Lottie, who is a queen. Um, yes. And her mean seems lovely. I love the way she just kind of trolls her child. <laughs> like yeah, there's lots of trolling going on there. It's like Peter, I mean, Peter is the epic troll, as we know, because mm. Peter keeps making dishes his brother can't eat. Um, <laughs> so the signature was ob- obviously this week, the, the signature was that you had to do eight pasties. Yep. They needed to be 15 centimetres long, but they could be any shape you like. Ooh, er, uh, misses. Anyway. <laughs> what I love, though, they didn't over-fucking think them. Well, okay. not everybody. So okay, one person we'll had get to there. make them into a fish shape. We'll get, well, no, we'll get there. So two hours to do this. Mm. Um, 
we got a lot of innuendo, which wasn't deliberate, because, of <laughs> course, pasties can mean two different things. Yes. So, obviously, you can mean the traditional British sense of the, you know, pastry good, you know, semicircle, crimped 20 or 21 times, mm-hmm. um, filled with some savoury filling of whatever you choose. Then there's the other variety. Yes, which, you know, I'm learning about in burlesque. We aren't there yet. No. Last week was boas. This week is gloves. I don't know if we're at the pasties yet. I don't. We haven't taken off any clothes yet, so I think that could be, like, next term. I look forward to um, when you get to pasties week and you just bring in a packet of, like, Sergeant's Vest. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to get myself some nice, I don't know, Potato and and mince pasties. Oh, that'd be nice. So what I loved I like was the tone the whole ones. They look good. True. Turned around and said, "What's under the pasty takes real cooking." Mm. I mean, true. I mean, she is a writer of, of erotic novel fiction, she so is. you know. And then poor Hollywood said, "I want what's under the pasty to be brown and crispy." And we know what his tanning regime is like, so no <laughs> doubt he does. Um, Did you know the pasty was invented by Cornish people f- for um, a lunch down in the mines? Makes sense. You can carry it in your hand. Yeah, no, because the thing was, right, so the pasty technically should have a big fat crust on the, like, point yeah. on the end. Mm. And what they do is they put the meat and three veg in, like, three quarters of it, and then a quarter of it was a sweet part. So the miner could just start at the top and eat the way down, get a dessert, and then because their hands are all cold ridden, they could just chuck so the, the last crust bit away. away. Nice. Yeah. That's clever. Um, the other thing that's clever is the number of people that are now claiming to use Paul Hollywood recipes. <laughs> this, this is becoming a thing, and I don't know if I'm comfortable with it. I got it feels... this last week was I got this recipe from Paul Hollywood. This week, I think it was um, Laura said, oh, it's, this is a Paul Hollywood. No one's reaching out for a Prue Leaf re- recipe. What's that saying? I think us? they're all reaching out for the Prue Leaf, other types of books. <laughs> they, they go to, they look in, they go to like Booktopia, they write in Prue Leaf books. Like Prue Leaf as the author. Yeah. And it opens up and their intention is to buy a recipe book. But they really intend. But then, you know, like her two sailors in the Caribbean. Or... <laughs> and then you get, the, and then you of course get the comparison because it goes Prue Leaf. Did you mean Miss Elizabeth? Anyway, <laughs> um, only people who listen to Canadian will get that. And if you don't, look her up. Anyway. Oh my God. I want Miss Elizabeth and Prue Leaf to do a, um, oh. a, 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 a chapter, like exchange. Could you imagine that? Needs to be read by Noel Fielding. <laughs> oh, great. Christy's in a happy place now. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was interesting. They were trying different types of, of, of pastry, including the short crust. I, I wasn't – I was interested by the short crust. But you can have a savoury short crust. Yeah, I know you can have a savoury short crust. And I think either works well. I, I, I'm just a fan of pasties. In my, in my head, I always go a Both bit – I always go a bit sweeter on the short crust, and that's probably where, where my issue is. I also love a good puff pastry. Oh, yeah. I'm a bandit. Puff pastry is my favourite kind of pastry. I'm really, like, I'm not surprised. Like, I reckon if this was Australia, you'd get more fillings from a yum char. Like, you'd probably get more, oh, completely. like, um, char su yeah. and, like, some barbecue pork stuff, like, going on, or maybe, like, a red bean um, pasty. Uh, so I'm just making myself hungry, really. You really are. Um, I can see you're salivating. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I loved seeing the Indian, um, like, the alu goba. Yes, goba. that was that was really cool. So we'll I go never through. Never pronounce it correctly. So we'll go through. People what... are going to be yelling down their phones, going, "Oh my god, Christy!" So Dave you're made so white, and I'm like, "Yeah." So Di- so Dave made Thai basil chicken pasties. Now we'll come back to some of these because there are a couple of issues. Mm. The number of people that put rice in them, anyway. Um, Hermine made Moroccan tangine. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that was nice. Uh, Laura went with the proper tasty pasties, which was basically a Paul Hollywood recipe. Yeah, cheese um, and onion. Yeah, um, Linda. We'll come back to. Her. I'm not even going to announce what she did just yet because we have to talk <laughs> about Linda. Lottie went with toad in the holeless pasties, and the reason why she did that was she goes, "I can't work out what's the toad and what's the hole." Um, <laughs> that's a line all unto itself. And Prue Leaf was disgusted. She's oh. like, I don't think this is going to work. I think this is a horrible idea. Has and she it, never had a meat pie with a potato top? No, but what was really funny was you had um, you had Noel, I think it was, it was Noel and Paul standing there going, no, that sounds perfect to me. Mm-hmm. And Prue going, I don't think this is going it's to work. bangers and mash wrapped in pastry. What's to lose? You know the sausage is going to be cooked correctly. You know there's going to be a bit of relief with the creaminess of the mashed potato. Mm, I, I would have left the onions out of the gravy. But the gravy's going to keep it nice and yeah. damp and tasty. 
And if your pastry's good, it's not going to make it soggy and run out. No, that's the thing. Like potato pies work. And and the interesting thing was she was worried about how how runny it was going to be and it was going to be a wet mixture. And the problem ended up being with much of these pasties was they were all really bone dry. So, like, Lottie gave you a bit of relief. Yeah, and, you know, they might have been ugly delicious, but they were delicious. Uh, Mark went, went with Cornish fish pasties. Um, I Corn- was excited to see these because he was using Saint Fear, and I'm like, that mm. is such a cool, oh, I love the taste. What of I really loved too was the fact that they mentioned that you're from Cornwall, and he goes, yeah, but I'm actually from up north. north. And they went, no, 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 Cornwall. <laughs> we need somebody from Cornwall. Can um, you talk in a brogue for yeah, us? Can you- Here, can you add some turnips to your pasty? How's your scrumping? <laughs> um, anyway. Um, Are you reading? Any Daphne de Maurier. <laughs> I love the idea that I went scrumping and you went Daphne de Maurier. Yes, because the guy I dated from Cornwall lived in Foy where Daphne de Maurier's house was. So I had to be fucking told that every time he told me about his amazing hometown. <sighs> anyway, um, Alugobi um, pasties by Mark with a K. Um, now... Peter went with now. Now Peter went with um, kedgeri, um, which is flaked fish, boiled rice, parsley, hard boiled eggs, curry powder, butter or cream if it's a traditional dish with sultanas. Mm. Um, it's an Indian slash UK dish, which is always what you want to hear. Yeah, like when um, when when, when the, tikka the, masala. Yeah, the great the great British dish, of course, is chicken tikka masala. Um, interesting combinations. So when we get into it. Um, Let's talk about Linda because we've skipped Linda and I want to talk about what Linda did. So Linda said she went with Indian flavoured pasties. Now her Indian flavours, she said, I want to try to capture the essence of a samosa. And then she went, yeah, and then she went in a pasty and then she went, and I've decided that I don't want to fold it like a pasty. I want to shape them like samosas. So she just made samosas. That's all she did. (laughs) Like, she wanted to capture the essence of a samosa by making a samosa. And then when they got to the judgment, Paul Hollywood said, you've really captured the essence of a samosa. I'm like, she fucking made them. Look, I think she could get Ben Stiller in to do the, um, to do the ad for this. You know, the essence of samosa. Samosa. The essence of water. And, and I loved when they got to the judgment too. And mm-hmm. Prue's like, did you not see the bit where we said we wanted them crimped? And she goes, no, I didn't read that. Like, even if she got a fork and just crimped the edge of it to at least. But she just purely made samosas. Not like They're delicious, but they're like samosas. It's like, mm. yeah, that's not a pasty. No. Like, I don't care if you want to, oh, it might be an Indian version of a pasty. No, no, they were clear what they wanted with a pasty. Yeah. Reimagining the pasty as a dish that's something else. That would be like me going, I want to reimagine this duck as roast chicken and then making myself a duck. And then when they went, but this is a duck, I'm like, no, 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 it's inspired by chicken. chicken. <laughs> you, you just got to get the concept. You, see, Linda is a... See, I, okay, Linda sounds like she's the pie shop lady from, like, 1853. Um, that's, you know, just down the road from Mrs. Lovett's. But she serves proper meat pies to proper gents and ladies. Um, but really, she's, a, she's an avant-garde thinker. She's wanting to think outside the box. She's like, sweetie, darling, you know, it's art. I just want some art in samosa form. <laughs> art in samosa form. So, in the judgment... Um, but it's a pasty. In the judgment. You have to understand that. Mark with a C. Um, they said that it was nice flavours, but it was far too dry. Like mm. The Cornish fish pasty. They said it was far too dry and needed more. Needed some scrumpy. Should have served it with a side of scrumpy. 100%. Uh, Peter, they said it looked great. Mm. They said it had really good flavour. But then Paul pointed out that rice in pastry makes this really dry. Yeah. Like, I'm just sitting there thinking, yeah, that would be, like, very sand-like by the time, you know, because, again, like, you, you you drop your phone, you know, in a toilet or in a bowl. What do you do? You, you put it in rice. You, yes, you, much to Uncle Roger's disgust. Yeah, you have, your, you have your filling of your things a bit too dry. What do you do? You dump it in rice. Yeah. Same thing. Look, I think, it, you know, logically it seems clever because you've got to cool everything down. Yeah. Um, so you could, you know, you could create, cook your rice and cool it down quickly and cook your filling. You don't have to make a shit ton of filling then, so it might be quicker to cool down in that regards. I don't know. I'm just kind of 
You're, trying, you're hoping. Uh, speaking of grasping at straws, Lottie, um, a queen was talking. Um, they did say that the taste of Lotties were absolutely amazing, but again, they pointed out how ugly they were. Yeah. Um, and that brought out the first one of the series, the first time that Matt Lucas looked at it and said, save me one. Remember that one? <laughs> and I'm like, like oh. there we go. We've been waiting to see how long it took him to break it out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Next week, he runs through the tent just stealing some David Williams stuff going, ah. No, he steals some David Williams stuff by sleeping with every female on the crew. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark, with a K, obviously, you know the difference by now. Yeah. Um, they said it was what a pasty should look like. It was well crimped, it had good flavour, and a great texture. Mm-hmm. And by the time we get to his showstopper, thank God he made a good pasty. So, um, I mean, they said it needed a few more minutes on the bake, but then they actually said that it was full, it was beautiful flavour, it was well balanced and well baked. So she didn't need a few more minutes on the bake. No. So again, there were there were a bit of there's a bit of weirdness here. So I thought Amin was about to get a handshake. Yeah. Followed by her not getting anywhere close to a handshake. But Mark Paul walked away. Got a handshake Mark too. definitely should have got a handshake as well. I mean, he got what a Matt Lucas handshake. What a pasty looks like. Yes. Right. This and is tastes like this and... is exactly what a pasty should be. There's nothing wrong with this. It's nearly flawless. Walked away. Do you I think? Wonder... Yeah. Do you think Paul is just like? Still dirty on last week. I think Paul was pissed about last week, and I think he just decided that he wasn't going to help me. No, no one's getting a handshake. I gave you all a handshake the other week, and look where it fucking got me. Yeah. Um. So now, now again, Linda. They said she missed the crimping. Paul acknowledged it was just a samosa, and then again, as I said before, said you got the idea of a samosa in there by making a fucking samosa. Again, this is like, you know, this is like we go back to Australian Bake Off and we talked about it. We, we referenced it last week, obviously. Yeah. Um, the idea of the bubka when Antonio made a panettone and they were like, that's a great panettone. I was like, yeah, but the challenge was bubka. You know, hi, it's a samosa challenge. What are you going to make for your samosa challenge? Right, is that, well, how about a pasty? No, no, that's not a pasty. That's, a, that's not a samosa. That's a pasty. Everyone would go, obviously, duh, mm. flip it around. This is a pasty challenge. Hang on a minute. That's a samosa. And everyone went, yeah, fair enough. I'd like to have, have like the, the, a, like some old Cornish person, right? Probably me, Evis, from Cornwall. <laughs> Hold on, i got to get not, not Irish accent. Not Irish. Accent. Hi, me, Evis, from Cornwall. And I've come up here to, 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 you know, adjudicate the decision whether this is a pasty or not. And I'm going to take it down to mine and see if it lasts after I've done a full day's work. Once we find the canary, I'll give you back the results. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she goes like, I'm sorry. It was more like a samosa because it just disintegrated in my hand and the canary died. <laughs> Not from the samosa, I have to say. Just from the gas that we found in the mine shaft. <laughs> samosa was lovely. Um, Apparently, Mavis is also... <laughs> Temporary. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Queen of accenting is home and hosed. Anyway, Laura's, they said there was nice colour on them. They weren't a regular size, but Prue didn't care because she's like, they're large and fat. I can see the flavour in them. Mm. Um, and they said that the flake of the pastry and the flavour was really good. Yeah. Um, so after the first one, again, Laura was quite happy with hers. Lottie was like, okay, so that's not bad. As long as I don't completely fuck up the um, technical this week, we're good. Um, <laughs> as long as they don't completely fuck it up. That was the thing. Like, Lottie's attitude was, well, we all know how that went last week. Let's, let, let's not, shall we? But, I mean, last week you also all failed at brownies. So, <laughs> the- Look, at this week, at least they all made something edible, like even samosas. Now, you could have had a nice picnic. At least they got something fucking right for true. lunch. True. Now, this, um, I, I think they were grading on a curve. Um, <laughs> so the technical. Now the, now, the technical started a weird theme of refinement and everything had to be refined. Um, well, they probably had to remind them they're on a fucking national television show and people, you know, want things that look fairly decent, even if it's a little rustic. <laughs> like, just up your game. We don't need bullshit. We need um, fancy, <laughs> like, fucking, what's something fancy? Grouse. Is grouse fancy? No. Um, quail. Quail's fancy? Yeah. What do fancy people eat? And that kind of shit. Poor. Um, <laughs> fancy people eat the poor. Anyway, um, <laughs> God, that's good. Anyway, um, three raspberry and three salted caramel eclairs. Yep. Now, this is going to be something that you absolutely adore because yep. you and eclairs. Oh, I'm here for it. You are a bandit for a good eclair. You are and a bandit for a good shoe pastry. And seeing the raspberry, I'm like, ooh, imagine like the raspberry filling with like a chocolate top, like a dark chocolate Yes, you've top. now given me my task for the weekend, yeah. which is to make... 
dark chocolate eclairs with raspberry filling. Because I know people like to like pair it with um, white chocolate, but we all know white chocolate is like inferior to dark chocolate. Yeah, even I would. I mean, I've already said I do like white chocolate, but I am a dark chocolate fiend. Yeah. So dark chocolate is is great as chocolate, and ruby chocolate doesn't exist anyway. Um, Prue made a statement that reflected to me that she has not watched this show. <laughs> well, they should all be able to make shoe. Let's go back to last <laughs> season, shall we? Was she even there? Was she paying attention? Last season where they had to make shoe buns and nobody could make a single shoe bun. And they, they literally looked around and everyone in the tent went, I don't know how to make shoe. You don't make shoe? No, no, you don't know how to make shoe? No one could fucking make a shoe bun to save themselves oh. last year. <laughs> they did it again this year with the instruction of make the shoe. And, I mean, at least this time they all seem to have a little bit more of an idea about how to make shoe. Do you think this was a redemption shoe for, Maybe. for British? I like the idea that there was actually crib notes in the corner and they're like, you know, we're not going to tell them how to do it. But, it, oh, there's a big screen just behind the camera <laughs> with this is how you make shoe pastry. They've got Noel and Matt acting out how to make shoe pastry. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kabuki Fieta finally. <laughs> they're gearing up for next week. Noel and Matt making Kabuki Fieta on how to actually make, make shoe, shoe pastry. Yeah. Um, but... This idea that they all should know how to make shoe pastry, and as we sort of saw, most of them seemed to, although, well, we'll talk about Linda. So I like the fact that we started off, though, with Noel talking about Prue writing her books. Yes. And talked about this quite a racy scene here between two farm hands. <laughs> I'd like that. I'd like to, it's not, the reason why they gave them three hours and 45 minutes to do this. Oh, no, that was the next one. That episode. was the show supper. But they gave them a long time to do it. It was just so they had a little bit of me time in between, just to relax, you know. Needed a nap. K- kitchen utensils, um, you know, uh, what's that called? Optional? Yes. Just uh, Well, like baking was optional last week, the, so. Lights dimmed in the tent. A moment to yourselves, everybody, mm. a moment to yourselves. <laughs> um, speaking of moments to yourselves, Linda. So Linda obviously reimagined the the, 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 the reimagined reimagined <laughs> the first challenge, obviously. She reimagined the pat the, 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 the pasty as, you know, a samosa. Yes. Well she decided that she was gonna reimagine the Eclair as a Shiro. Um and <laughs> my god, um She attempted it. Twice. I know. And like, what I really loved was Matt Lucas deciding to support supermarkets during a pandemic <laughs> by, for the second time this series, going, do you want me to nick down to the shops and buy you some? And Linda just looks at him and goes, that might be an idea. <laughs> they just kept on coming out like heroes. That was such a generous offer because, as we all know, when you're in lockdown, you get an hour out each yeah. day and one trip to the, the shops. Like, But, like... The first ones failed miserably. And what I loved was the eternal optimism. Mm. She's looking at them in the oven. They clearly were not rising. And she's just staring at them going, not yet, but I'm just going to see if it goes a bit longer. And then, not yet. See, and then, she, then it was about three quarters of the way through the challenge where she looked at the camera and went, they're not going to rise, are they? And it's like, no. And then she not goes. even if you stuff them with Viagra. And then she's like, I'll make them again. And they went half an hour to go. And you saw everyone look at her like, what? And the second ones came out thinner than the first ones and looked more like churros than the first one. And she goes, what should I do with them now? And I've screamed at the television, dunk them in cinnamon. <laughs> Give up. Yes. Pretend. Just do what you did in the first challenge. I didn't see it. I mean, the thing that I was happy to see is that the majority of people were pumping out something that resembled more or less a, um, an eclair. I mean... And I, I'm here for her minds. I think she got unfair critiquing that they were too fat. Like, don't fat shame your eclair. Especially not an eclair. Like, just the bigger the better. More now, eclair. There just were, more eclair to love. I mean, to be fair, there are a couple of things we do need to discuss before I get to the judging here, which is the first thing we need to talk about. I mean, I know they're judges and I know they're supposed you're, to judge them, but do we we should be more inclusive with our eclairs these days. You're to, you're, you're not if they're cheerios. You're talking up and defending obviously the the the, the challenge. Yes. I do want to however just pull the, the curtain back a little bit. Mm. Because when they did the voiceover when they got to the table. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going okay, there. Okay, go for it. Yep. When they got there and they do the voiceovers and Paul and Prue walk in and look at the table and the voiceover from Matt Lucas is Prue and Paul are looking for six elegant eclairs, to which Christy very loudly yelled at the television, Keep looking! (laughs) It 
it was accurate. They looked yep. terrible. I said to you at this point in time, mm. how is it that these bakers managed yep. to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory <laughs> every time? They looked fine. The shoe came out and I'm like, this looks good. Mm-hmm. Then we had half of them saying that they hadn't really made a creme pat, they'd made yogurt. Um, and there was runny, it was all over the place. Lottie's cream split completely. You just, they all had things that like half of them didn't really fill them. Mm-hmm. Like Mark had really good shoe buns and then didn't really fill Thank them. Fuck for Peter. Like, who went, oh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly competent. Like Pete, yeah, Peter was competent enough, but this was the thing. Like they had so much promise all the way through, the, except mm-hmm. for poor Linda. But the rest of them had so much promise all the way through as they went. And I'm like, this might actually work. And at one point, you actually looked at me and went, no, this is a much better week than last week. They're doing so much better. Then they got to what happened at the end and they all like whacked the sort of frosting on top of it, which looked horrible. Mm -hmm. None of them looked like what they had served up, except for Peter's. It looked exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, But the rest of them didn't look like what. Prue had made. Yeah. It looked like they'd stuck a bit of fondant on top of a really weird shoe bun and filled it with like a creamy yogurt. That's what they all resembled. And I was looking at it going, but you had it. Like you you did it. And then what happened? You know, at this point in time, I'm really glad that COVID hit because I'm really hoping this is giving all these bakers with potential the time and and um, kind of impetus to fucking practice. <laughs> because if you want to go on to Bake Off, can you please all do us a favour and fucking practice? Just, just British, like, like the others. Yeah, they all do. Keep the doing others, what you're doing. The others all do. Again, it's the old how. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. <laughs> yeah, practice. All right. How do you get to the Bake Off tent? Well, I mean, apparently at the moment it's an Instagram account, but practice should be your answer. Absolutely. Like, and, and the good series of bake and again, the Canadians, when we've spoken to the Canadians from the most recent series, mm. they talk about how much they practiced and how much they baked and how much they went, especially when they knew they were going in. Yeah. They did everything and they worked at it. And it's something that I found, I don't know, it, like I'm pretty sure the earlier seasons of Bake Off, there were people in there who had not only some talent but also, like, some skill. Like, they'd been developing their skills to go in. Like. Yeah. And, and like, what what's worried me, and I hope it doesn't continue in this series. Last series I, and the series before that, I genuinely thought they started somewhere and rather than a progression up, they went backwards. Mm. And, like, two seasons ago, again, I've brought it up several times, two seasons ago, felt like they changed the challenges halfway through because they were getting far too difficult and they went with a sponge for three in a row. Yeah. Right? And that worried me because it felt like they'd gone backwards from where they started from. I hope that we get progression in this series. Again, Mm. I've seen bits and pieces of um, Japanese week next week and we might be waiting for the week after. But progression is what I'd like to see. Maybe this is something that British doesn't have that the others have and that is... The kind of behind the scenes bake off camaraderie, com- not camaraderie, but like the the experience, like you mm. know, like living in and like uh, the same, like you know, accommodation near each other with access to a kitchen. But this and, group did. Yeah, but you could see they had their families there. Like Mark with a C, we saw his daughters last week. Yeah, they brought them in last week. That's true. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if they're all in like being housed. Yeah. In different little places, maybe glamping tents. Maybe. <laughs> I love the idea of them glamping. <laughs> like, um, uh, I, I don't know. Lottie has got herself a gypsy caravan. Oh, no, no. no. I mean, after, after the show stopper tonight, clearly it's Linda with a gypsy caravan. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. With a roof that collapses, apparently. <laughs> yes. So, um, that, An unstable caravan. And the other thing I do need to talk about before we get to the judgment from this mm. challenge has nothing to do with baking. And it was the question from Matt Lucas to Mark. Mm. Would you go on Naked Attraction? <laughs> Engaged, isn't he? <laughs> but you know, spice it and, up. And Mark pissed himself laughing. It was hilarious. So, so Naked Attraction, for those that don't know, mm-hmm. Naked Attraction is by far and away the weirdest dating show on television. Um, it's in the it's a UK show. You can actually see it on YouTube, which when I tell you what it is, is remarkable. Naked Attraction is the person has all these potential dates and they're all in boxes. Mm-hmm. And they're naked. Do you see their heads or just their bodies? No, no, so here's the thing. You can pick 
if you go bottom half or top half. Oh. So you can maybe not see their heads or their upper chest. You just start from the genitals down. Wow. Or you can go chest up or whatever. So, <laughs> so you start right. by walking around judging the penises, basically, or judging the vaginas. Um, oh, so you don't see it all at once. You kind of... Yeah, you rate... see a section. Okay, and you rate... You rate them, and then you pick them based off that in conversation, and then you get to see all of them when you pick them. So the, the penis is essentially like grinder because apparently... <laughs> uh, not apparently. I know. That is all that's on grinder. It's penis. <laughs> It's like, now you know why men say dick pics, because that's what they're attracted to is apparently just dick pics. Dick pics. But no, so so Naked Attraction is the most bizarre dating show ever. Like, you start, and it's literally walking along the line. And again, they have, they have people who are bisexual, they have pansexual people, so you get mm. a range of dating options, and it's fantastic and wonderful in that regard. So inclusive. But... The judgment is you walk along, first of all, and you're looking at, you know, I don't really like that one, I don't really like that one, I don't really like that one, you can all go. Then it's d- different levels. It's really interesting. But it's a social experiment. But, okay, a penis can't tell you if that person's good in bed or even knows where the clitoris is. Like that? that no, but you, you, I, f- I feel like if you're going onto a TV dating show, you're probably not necessarily worried about that. <laughs> If you're if you're being sold a pitch hmm. of do you want to come look at someone naked in a box on television and not giggle like again and they're not they're very they're very serious about the way they do this <laughs> it's very earnest it's a very earnest exercise naked attract it's so weird I <laughs> being the producer I recommend that everybody that's not my mother looks this up um, <laughs> no I'm glad to have a have a squeeze <laughs> sure she listens to the podcast everyone else, look it up it's weird not at or, work. No, not at work. Unless you're one much... of the producers of Naked Attraction. Yeah, unless, un- case... unless you're planning on doing an Australian version of Naked Attraction. Um, Go for it. Hi, Nicole. Anyway, so, <laughs> David, they said that, uh, to, almost linking up, so the comment that I wrote down for Dave, the comment that I wrote down for Dave's <laughs> is naked and runny. Empty, empty, <laughs> empty and runny, not naked and runny, empty and runny. And I'm like, that's following up from Naked Attraction. That's It really is. Um, Lotties, they said, were neat and the icing had set well, but when they cut them open, the raspberry coolie had split. Split. And she Uh, knew it was split. Raspberry creme pad had split. Um, There's only one way to describe what happened with Linda's. Paul walked up, looked at them and went, what? (laughs) It's the best Paul Hollywood reaction. I'm sure he was having Stroop Waffle flashbacks. Um, Hermine, um, they said they looked like eclairs. And again, that's like last week when, you know, the high praise was it tasted like it was supposed to. This was, it looks like an eclair. Um, the raspberry tasted okay. Um, Laura's looked neat enough. The pastry, however, wasn't baked. The flavours were okay. Mark with a C. Um, it was an original take on the icing, according to Leaf. <laughs> then she looked at him and went, there's a lot wrong with this. Oh. Scrambled creme pat, underbaked, terrible. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, don't hide your feelings. Tell us. And this is the thing I really like Mark with a C, and I'm just I'm just a bit gutted. Look, the thing with Mark with a C, with all of them actually, is they can do okay, but when they fail, my word, it's spectacular. It's spectacular, yeah. They don't lightly fail this mob. Um Mark with a K, more or less okay, but empty insides. That was a problem. <laughs> I know. I think that's probably a lot of people's, you know, status at this point in time in the UK. It sums up COVID. The lo- as the lockdown starts to lift and they're allowed to go to the pub, but only outside it's, in the freezing Yeah, cold. how do you feel? Mark, Mark, Mark with a K is answering how most people felt through, felt through their big COVID lockdown there. More or less okay, empty insides. <laughs> um... <laughs> And Peter's were nice, neat, c- consistent, and not bad at all. Not bad at all was the high praise <laughs> as we got to the judging, <laughs> the judging which had Linda eighth. So even with what Mark got, yeah. Linda's dunking Dunk. churros. Well, it didn't worse. fit any brief. <laughs> there was no brief that matched. Um, that was the follow-up line, by the way, from Paul was about Linda's. Oh, I see, they're dunking a glass. <laughs> No, la dunking eclairs. So it's like la fondue eclair. <laughs> la dunking eclair. Um, Mark was... Look, look, she might have left, but she's got a whole new business ready to go. <laughs> la dunking eclairs. Mark was seventh. Uh, I'm back at dunking eclairs. Laura was sixth. Dave was fifth. Lottie was fourth. Mark with a K was third. 
Uh, Amin was second and Peter was first. This is one of those w- rare weeks, by the way, because we've talked a lot so far about the fact that Paul really loves Peter. Mm. Um, I thought Peter should have been Starbaker this week. Yeah, he was consistently good. Like Laura, I, I know Laura nailed the, the tart, but Peter's tart was also absolutely spectacular. Yeah, and had and a beautiful he, cage. And he won the technical and she yeah. came sixth. Six, yeah. Like, I, I genuinely thought that Peter should have actually got Starbaker. I don't mm. often say that. Um, the caged tart. Let's get to the caged <laughs> tart. Like it's going to be my autobiography. It does feel weird, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, three hours and 45 minutes. I'll quickly read through what they did and then we'll go through what happened. So Dave made a chocolate mango and lime one. Uh, Amin made a lime confit and lemon meringue tart. Laura's was a Kent garden tart. Uh, Linda's was a gypsy tart. Um, Lottie made an apple tree tart. Mark made a posh apple and blackberry pie. Again, this fucking idea of poshing up market, which came in. Um, Mark's was a mess sage in a bottle. Um, and Peter's was a blackberry and lemon tart. So as we got into it, once again, we got this whole Prue being innuendo without meaning to be innuendo mm-hmm. This needs to be a special tart. I need it to be delicious. Like you want to eat it more, but you shouldn't because it's really rich. That feels like the byline for another one of her novels. Yeah, maybe it's the start. Maybe that's the opener and Miss Elizabeth can reply to that. Oh, that could be great. And it could be called The Caged Tart. The Caged Tart. Yeah. Um, we had a pyramid off. We did. Like Dave was making the, the Louvre pyramid. It was like 500, no, 6,000 BCE <laughs> in, in um, Kemet. Where, where's, come on, history person, don't leave me hanging. Um, the Valley of the it's about the five, Pyramids. It's about, about 5,000 years ago, yeah, about, fi- about 5,000 BC, and we're talking about um, the, Giza, the general Giza area. Um, and we started with this. But the thing was, we started with Pyramid a... Pyramid off. But we started, this is the thing. Like, I wanted to see a challenge where they do this, but you have to build through the stages. So someone has to build the, the first tomb, which was basically a box, a, an up, above-ground box. Then well, they need, did. That was, um, that was her means. Then you need the step pyramid. Okay, and we do sort of have the step pyramid. Mark with a C had yeah. like layers, so that's the step pyramid. The step pyramid, yeah. We didn't have a bent py- pyramid. Could we say the bent pyramid was interpreted by Mark with a K? You know, like it was it was curved. Yeah, we'll holes. give him that. And then we've obviously got two pyramids being built. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I think Lottie's is the Great Pyramid. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, so Lottie's Lottie's is the great is the Great Pyramid. Um, that we all know and is visible from Pizza Hut in Cairo. Um, not joking, legitimate. Do um, they have an all-you-can-eat buffet? Like, how cool would that be? All-you-can-eat pyramids. Um, yeah. It would be good. But Lottie made three pastries because she goes, it's a pastry challenge. Duh. Um, <laughs> and then later on when she's doing the pyramids, she goes, it is a pyramid. It's me trying to be creative, right? <laughs> like, she wasn't even sold on the idea. <laughs> I loved her concept and I loved her retort to Paul when he said, is that a tart though? She goes, I looked up the definition of a tart. It means flat pastry. Yep. So, And Paul still didn't, didn't agree with her. Um, it's not like she was trying to reinvent it. She's like, well, this will fit the definition. Yeah. Um, at this point, they cut back to Mark with a K who said that I'm pricking the base of the tart. And then burst into a mini chuckle. <laughs> and I'm like, we are so related. <laughs> now, just another question, though, because, like, um, we got a key lime pie, obviously. Mm. Pie, a pie pies tart. and tarts? I mean, look, no, yes. No, but it wasn't a key lime. She called it a Kentish tart. Like, a Kent garden tart. <laughs> Don't say that too fast. You might mix it up. Yeah, but we also, yeah, but we also, no, Hermine also did a lime confit and lemon meringue as well. Mm. We didn't get lemon meringue pie. Um... So we got a couple of, yeah, we got a couple of those from, uh, maybe. I have no problem with any of them, by the way. I thought they were all fine. I didn't think there was anything And I think there's a bit of crossover, like, because the American sweet pies are essentially open tarts. What we did get was um, a great drag name. <laughs> yes, we did. Coco, what was it? Coco started with a B. P. P. Coco Pet Sublet. Ca- ca- Coco Pate Sublet. Yeah. That's just It's brilliant. a perfect drag name. We're going to see that on UK Drag Race next year. Or maybe in Canadian because, mm-hmm. you know, Sheldon. 
Yeah, but he's already got a drag name. Yeah, but he could have a second one. He could have a UK persona. That could be great. With like a French. He can edit two versions of um, Bake Off. Mm. He two, two Bake Off. He can edit two versions of RuPaul's Drag Race at once. Can you, as a drag queen, like kill off one of your personas, like do a Taylor Swift? She's just, dead. Like she's dead. <laughs> And reinvent yourself. Like, you know, Robin Sparkles goes to Robin. From Daggers. Daggers. Yeah, of course you can. Of course you can. Then you two can fall in love with Paul Schaefer. Anyway, um, Amin did a lot. She was the one who did the floor remove this week. So she had the tart, then she had macarons on top of that, and then the box. Mm. Um, That's a lot of effort to go to. And that (sighs) box looked absolutely amazing. And Prue Leith was talking about how amazing the box looked. Right up until the point that Paul Hollywood picked it up and broke it. Which goes to show how, like, delicate it was and how amazing but, Hermine was to pop it on But there. it wasn't ultra delicate. Paul just fucking destroyed it. It was like Hulk smash. It was fairly rigid. Like, it was delicate but rigid. It wasn't, like, brittle. Mm. And the way Paul picked it up and he just, like, snapped it and she looked at it and goes, until Paul Hollywood got near it and looked <laughs> at him like, you fucking did that. That wasn't even like, oh, it was brittle. You had to work to snap that one. Um, um, but he made it look effortless. Like then he's just they're snapping thick pastry all day, every day. Then Matt Lucas asked the question of Laura, "Who would you want to put in a tiny cage?" <laughs> and she said, "Oh, if I have to do it." And I'm like, "Don't answer this question. You know what's coming next." <laughs> I'd like to have a tiny Peter in a cage. To which Matt Lucas goes, "Hey, Peter, Ooh. Laura wants to put you in a cage." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "That's right. She's already got me on a leash." <laughs> See, I mean, the good part is it was in a cage because you know what the other option is, don't you? What? Pizza oven. <laughs> She's just got a new one, you know. As we said, the second anniversary is Pizza Stone. So, yes. um, Linda. So, Linda was making the gypsy tart. And as she said, the, the part, of, the large part of the filling of that is just sugar and evaporated milk. Um, mm-hmm. But Noel Fielding came over and went, my favourite thing to eat at school mm. was a gypsy tart. He goes, we used to get gypsy tarts all the time. I have not had one since school. I'm so looking forward to this. And he gave her a massive hug. And you can just see her going, oh, that's wonderful. I mean, there are things that are quite simple that are, you know, that do bring back childhood memories. But I'm like, as an adult, if you have it, is it as good as it was when you were a kid? Not usually. No, it's like when I tried to recreate Girl Guide Goulash at home after cooking on a campfire after being hiking for eight hours during the day. Of course it tasted fucking brilliant. When I cooked it at home, what did we make? And this, and this goes back it, to my argument The base about, of it was two-minute noodles. That should tell you something. This goes back, of course, to my argument about you and Luke trying to find the um, ultimate chicken wings. No, they, they, they are real. Yeah, but don't try to do it because you try to recreate it, you'll only end it with sadness. Um, <sighs> time machine. If anyone has a time machine out there, like you don't have to take me to the place, but just... Just ask me for directions. I'll tell you where to go and you can go and get it. I don't have to come back with you because I don't want to, like, you know, like like make time collapse in on itself for these chicken wings. But I'm, I'm happy for you just to deliver, like, Uber time machine. <laughs> we then got the randomness of Matt and uh, and Noel where they cut back and they, they look and all you hear is, hello, lattice head. And you look down <laughs> and Matt Lucas is just wearing a lattice cage on his head. Someone has gone and got him extra bits of pastry. He's just like got it draped and he's like, this is the summer look for COVID. <laughs> um, and then we got Lottie pouring isomalt down the side of the pyramid to hold the whole thing together, which Mark could have done with because at this point Mark pulled his cage out and it just disintegrated. Aww. Like It just disintegrated into, into rubble. Um, Linda's was still stuck on the bowl because she put it on the bowl and she goes, I'll take it off the bowl now. It didn't work, so she put it back in the freezer. Pulled it out a second time, didn't work, put it back in the freezer, pulled it out the third time, it collapsed on the bowl. Oh. Um, uh, and again, she then tried to do her lattice work and she oh, the lattice work hasn't quite worked. And it looked like an old time Bavarian. It did. But Bavarians are great. And once again, so she was reimagining the tart as a Bavarian. <laughs> so Linda had a big day reimagining things. Um, Dave, they said it looked good, it was nice and neat, and the flavour was was lovely. Mark with a C, they said it looked effective. Um, that's what you want. <laughs> uh, good colour. The flavour was lovely and rich, but the base was thick. It was a weird looking one. It had a very thick base with like a mini trench between mm. it and the filling. It it, it looked weird. Yeah. Um, but they said that the flavours were nice. I mean, they said Paul Hollywood then snapped the cage in half, as we said. The flavours were lovely. The base could have been a bit thinner. 
I mean, I don't think it could have been because after he snapped the cage, I wouldn't want him touching the tart. Um, <laughs> and then they said that it was a Prue Leaf tart with a Paul Hollywood base in that it was delicate with the flavours, but the base was like like cement around the outside of it. Linda, um, Prue liked the colours of the parts of the cage, loved the flavours. Paul wanted a bit of a thinner tart. Um, I found that really interesting. Like, they, they went, look, the, the colours of the parts of the cage were great. Like, if, if you'd had the whole cage, it would have been better. Um, Laura, they said the cage was impressive. The tart looked nice. Um, Prue loved the key lime flavour. Mm. I said it was excellent. Uh, Lottie, the cage was sensational. But Paul, once again, questioned if it was a tart, called it squidgy. But then when they tasted it, they said the flavour was absolutely delightful. They said it just looks like a bit of a mess. Yes. Um, Peter, they said the cage design was really nice. Peter then said... Oh, you know, I mean, you didn't break this one. So Peter's at a point now where he's so comfortable with Paul Hollywood, he's taking the piss every time he talks to him. Yes. Um, the flavours were amazing and he referred to it as a happy tart. Well, Paul, you missed a treat. Could have called it a cheerful, cheerful tart. Cheerful tart, exactly. Could have called it a Christie. Yes, the same. exactly, the cheerful tart. Now, they said that Mark's cage wasn't a good one, which was an understatement of the century. Um, <laughs> it's less cage and did look more like a failed... Abstract installation. Very much. Um, He said that the piping was irregular and the poached pears didn't look good. But Prue said it was absolutely delicious. Mm. And Paul went, no, I don't really like this at all. And Paul just hated everything about it. Look, Paul was angry. Like he's. I I think Paul's not over last week. No, I think he's just pissed off that these people couldn't make baked brownies. There's no handshakes. There's pastry smashing going on. He really is just... You know, <coughs> might have committed a few pastry side, but Paul really is the pastry side copath. Is that a thing? It is now. Um, definitely is now. The pastry will killer. Like no, I like pastry side copath. Um, <laughs> so Laura wins Star Baker. I genuinely believed this week it should have been Peter. Mm-hmm. Um, and Linda goes home um, in what was probably the clearest the clearest send home we've had this yeah. series um you know duncan eclairs are not really a thing um <laughs> samosa pa- samosa pasties pasties are not a thing either um samosas they're just samosas you don't need to, don't need to. You know, stop trying to say samosa pasties um anyway that's your lot for this week next week Mm. It's Japanese week, allegedly. Um, Konnichiwa, I'm going to actually suggest to everybody listening to this that if you haven't already, go to YouTube, go to Uncle Roger. Yeah. Watch that first. Yeah. Because when we get to the critique of the episode, there's a lot to say. (laughs) So, until next week, Mm. I'm still Chris. And I'm still Christy. And we'll catch you all later. Ah, I'm pastry, don't kill me.